this brief video, let's just go over how to actually set up a database connection because you'll be doing this each time you start a new project, of course. Uh, I like to work with MySQL. Now you'll start this in the .env file. So you'll find this in the root of your project uh, right at the bottom typically. So I'll open up my file explorer here. You see down here near the bottom you see a .env. This is where you'll go and configure your connection to the database. Right here for SQLite is where it'll be, um, be set up as a default. So you set up MySQL there just by putting MySQL string right there. And usually when you're working with MySQL, if you've got it set up through something like, uh, what are those, WAMP or MAMP or XAMP, those things, uh, and you start up MySQL, you have a root user without a password, and that has access to all of your databases. So you can keep that as is right there. Uh, personally, I have my own user set up, and I just kind of you know, uh, set up a password with it. I do that not for any security reasons, but just to show something different in these videos so you can do what you want. Uh, the database that I set up is uh, called something else. It's not Adonis, but here we'll show you how to set up a database first and then you can uh, configure the name right here to match what you've just done. I use MySQL Workbench and you get this, I believe it comes packaged with MySQL Server, but I could be wrong. Uh, but you set up Workbench or if you have um, PHP MyAdmin, you can do it there as well. You just create a new database. So here, what you do on MySQL Workbench is you right-click somewhere down here uh, and you can create a new schema. I just have to find a blank spot to click. Here we go. Now i got to unselect that. I hold Control, click it. There we go. Right-click, create a schema. I believe there's an option up here somewhere too. Let's see, where's create a new schema? There we go. So you can even click one of these icons. You create a new schema. I named mine Series Adonis Blog. So when you create a new schema, you're creating a new database. And then you get something empty. There's something that kind of looks like this. All right. Now, because I created a new user and I want to add it to this database, what I do is I go to Users and Privileges and I select the user. So it's P who and then Schema Privileges. I add an entry, so this is where I select my new schema, so the database I have, which is Series Adonis Blog. And then you click OK, and then you'll have this highlighted. You can select all of the privileges, and then you click Apply. And then that user that you created is now, uh, now has permissions to access all of the tables and do everything that's needed on your particular database. Okay, so that's how I set it up. So here, I said it's Series Adonis Blog. So I just type in the name of the database here. Series Adonis Blog. I have my password, my user, MySQL. Now to use MySQL, you need the Node MySQL driver. So you open up a terminal and you do npm install MySQL, just like that. And you can use the save flag just to get that added to your package.json. So just hit enter there. And it shouldn't take too long. And once it's completed, of course, that will be in your package.json. And what I like to do, usually here I'll show you, when, it, when it's finished installing, you'll see it right here. Uh, they usually come with this little carrot here just to um, control the sort of updates uh, that you will make when you run npm install with subsequent uses of the, the app that you're making. I like to just take that out. I like to stick to one version. That's just me, you can do what you want, but you'll notice in my package.json, I typically remove all those carrots just so I have fine grain control over all the updates that I'm making. Okay, so you can save that, commit your work if you're using Git. Now once that's done, I like to test just to make sure that my connection is actually working. So here in your terminal again, you can use the Adonis command and migration just like that and with a colon, and you type run, and this will run the initial migrations. Uh, and with Adonis, you get a migration for a token and a user's table. So the migration is basically telling MySQL what to add to your database. Okay, so you hit run, and there you go. So I'll show you what the migration file actually looks like. So we'll go to token migration. And these are found in your, let's see, in your root of the fold of your project. I'll just close this. You'll see that there's a database directory within there. You have migrations and these are your migration files. 
So I'll open user migration just so you can see what's happening. We have an up function and a down function. In this case, we are creating the users table. And in that table, we want these columns. So we have increments, which adds an ID primary key to the table. And it increments automatically every time a new user is added, a new record is added. Then we have string types here for username, email, and password. And then timestamps. Timestamps is the created at and updated at fields. And uh, whenever you make uh, a new record, it'll make that timestamp for you automatically. Whenever you update it, then it'll change the updated at field for you automatically. So they're really handy. Keep them if you, uh, you'll need them with most of your tables. And then in the down function, this runs whenever you run a migration rollback or a reset. And what happens is you drop the user's table in that case. Now there are lots of different types of migrations you can make. And if you want to dive a little more deeply as you work with Adonis, you can go to the connects JS, that's connectsjs.org. I'll put a link down below the video. You go to that site and there's a huge amount of documentation you can go through and you can learn what you, uh, what you can put in here. Now Connects has two parts to it. There's the query builder, which you use to actually query your database, add and remove records uh, in your controllers. So when you're actually using your app, you add new users, you delete them, you update them. That's all done through the query builder. Uh, and then the migrations, so your table schema, that's what you use to actually create your tables and affect your tables in the database. So I'll open up uh, Connects right here and I'll show you. So we have a query builder heading, that's where you'll uh, kind of examine things like joins and where's and things like that. And down here you have your schema builder. This is the stuff that you'll put in your migration file. So take a look at that, explore a little bit, practice creating different tables if you'd like. Uh, if you have any questions, put that down below, of course. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. In the next video, we'll start putting a lot of this into practice. <laughs>